When embarking on a digital transformation, it's important to have a clear digital strategy. But what exactly is a digital strategy and how do you create one? I'm gonna talk about that here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients through their digital transformation journeys. And when we think about digital transformations and digital strategies, we often think about that roadmap, that three to five year roadmap of where we're going and how we're gonna get there, what the business case is, what the changes will be, how much it'll cost, all that good stuff. But the stuff before that of how to get there oftentimes can be confusing. And there's a lot of conflicting information in the marketplace. So really getting an agnostic objective view of what our digital strategy should be is very important. So what I wanna talk about today are the things that are most critical from a technology agnostic perspective to define the framework and the digital strategy that best fits you and fits your priorities as an organization. The first step in defining a digital strategy is to forget the word digital temporarily. Forget about that and talk about your strategy. What is your strategy? What are you trying to accomplish as an organization? Make sure you're aligned as an organization, especially as an executive team, as to what that strategy is and then you can start to translate that strategy into what it means for your digital transformation. So for example, if you know you wanna change your business model or your operating model or provide a better customer experience in certain specific ways, you can then start to translate what types of technological and process and organizational changes can help us in that transformational journey. So the first step then is to make sure we have alignment in our overarching strategy and then make sure that we translate that overarching corporate strategy into a digital strategy in terms of just high level parameters to start. What are the things that we know we want the digital strategy to accomplish, whether it be reducing cost or providing better customer experience or providing more flexibility and agility within the organization, whatever it may be, make sure that you translate that overarching corporate strategy into something that can be tangible for your digital strategy. The next step in defining a digital strategy is to address your business processes and your operating model. And there's two dimensions of this. First of all is understanding your current state. What is it we're doing today? Where are the pain points? And what are the things we know we want to improve and the things we know we want to change? And within that, by the way, you're probably gonna to wanna to prioritize the things that are most important and the things that are most aligned with that corporate strategy that we talked about in the last segment. Now, the second dimension of business processes and operating model is really shifting gears and focusing on the future state. So we've assessed the current state, we look at where the pain points are and the things we think we want to improve, then we define what is it we want the future state to look like. What are those improvements? What are those enhancements? And ultimately, we'll get to how can technology support us in that journey. But for now, we're just focused on operations and business processes. So that's the next step or an important work stream within defining your digital strategy is to take that operational business process view of where you're headed as an organization. Now the next step in defining a digital strategy is to define what your enterprise applications are and what sort of system architecture or solution architecture is going to best support that digital strategy. So notice that we haven't really talked about technology yet. We talked about strategy. We talked about business processes and operating model. Once you've done that assessment, you've defined your strategy and your future state operating model. Now you can start to look at technologies that might help you get there. And at this point, you may or may not be ready to define specific vendors yet, but it may just be certain types of technology. So you may just be looking at a high level at potential CRM options or supply chain automation or ERP systems, financial systems, whatever the case may be, there's certain types of technologies that you might be looking at and understanding how could those technologies potentially help enable the process and strategic improvements that you've defined up until this point. So that's part of it is starting to look at specific technologies and types of technologies that will help you in your transformation. The second part of it is also looking at how those systems will tie together, assuming you're going to have more than one type of technology to drive your transformation in the future. You want to make sure you understand how those technologies all tie together, how they'll integrate, where the single source of data will be, how you'll roll out those different technologies and phase them into the organization. All that stuff is part of solution architecture and planning that you wanna make sure you bake into your overall enterprise application and solution architecture strategy. Now, as this digital strategy starts to come into focus, as we've looked at strategy, processes, and now even technologies, now what starts to come into focus is the organizational impact. 
if we go this route that we've defined so far, what is that impact going to mean to the organization? How big of a change is it going to be? How big of a risk is it going to be organizationally? Where are the pockets of resistance going to be? Who's going to be impacted the most by this transformation? Those are the types of things we need to be defining as part of our organizational change strategy. And an effective way to do this is to assess the overall organization as it is now and start to proactively identify where those pockets of resistance might be and where the biggest challenges might be. And it's also an opportunity to assess your culture, understand your culture today and how you want to bend that culture or how you will need to bend that culture to support this digital strategy going forward. So all that stuff is part of the organizational change strategy. And I know I've talked at a very high level about change management here, but there's plenty of other videos on my YouTube channel that talk about organizational change management, best practices and tactics. So I encourage you to check out some of those videos as well. So the next portion of a digital strategy is your data and analytics. Where is your data going to reside? How are you going to cleanse the data? What's the single source of truth? And how is it going to fit into your overall architecture and your overall digital strategy? Now, another important part of data and analytics is the whole master data management process. So what are you going to do to transform your business in terms of how you manage data? Chances are that you probably need better governance around your data. You want to have repeatable, sustainable processes that help make sure your data is maintained well. So having those master data management processes in place is critical. And then finally, another component of data and analytics is really understanding the business intelligence, the reporting, any sort of predictive analytics and quantitative tools that your technology can provide, what does that tool set look like and how can technology help you get there? So really looking at not just the core technologies of what can automate your processes, but looking at the layer above that that takes all that information, that transactional data, and spits out something of use to you in terms of information, whether it be predictive analytics or certain types of reporting or BI tools, whatever the case may be, you want to make sure you look at that component as well. Now, once we've defined all these different moving parts and pieces of our digital strategy, we have to define what is our implementation strategy, our overall transformation strategy and plan. We're not going to boil the ocean overnight. We're not going to make these changes overnight. So we need to look further down the line of how long is this going to take and what is our phasing strategy? How are we going to incrementally roll these changes out to the organization? What are our priorities? What's our overall strategy? Now, one thing I'll note is that for larger organizations, this could be a multi-year journey. It could be three, five, seven years that you're going down this path. So you really are looking out well into the future. And even if you're a small or mid-sized organization, chances are it's probably going to be a 12 to 24 plus month journey. And so regardless of how long it is, you want to make sure you're looking at the entire duration, the phasing strategy and the overall approach and resource plan to help you get there. Now, finally, but certainly not least importantly, is the business case and ROI analysis. Looking at the numbers, how much is this going to cost you? And realistically, what sort of business benefits do we expect to see? And what sort of measurable business benefits do we expect to see? You certainly are going to have intangible business benefits. You might certainly have burning platform types of reasons for change, such as you need to replace your old technology. But those intangibles, unquantifiable benefits are not enough. You need to have quantifiable, measurable business benefits not only to help justify the project and the overall digital strategy, but to give you some project governance framework to help you make decisions throughout the transformation. So it'll help you decide, for example, if it makes sense to customize a technology. Without the benefit of having a business case, you won't know how to make that decision. You won't have the data, you won't have the ROI analysis to help point to. So making sure that you use that as a governance tool during implementation and then also post implementation as a benefits realization tool to make sure that you actually realize those benefits and optimize the benefits. And by the way, spoiler alert, you're probably not going to realize all those benefits on day one. It's going to take you some time. So that business case and ROI analysis becomes handy again after implementation during the multiple phases of your transformation. So make sure you have a business case and ROI analysis for justification, for project governance during the transformation, and also to optimize business benefits after the transformation. So if you're looking for more information about digital strategy and digital transformation best practices, I encourage you to check out some of the links below. I include a number of resources and downloads that are meant to help you through your transformation journey. Most notable is the 2021 Digital Transformation Report, which includes a lot of strategic guidance on how to plan and execute your transformation. 
as well as reviews and rankings of potential technologies to help you through your transformation. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day.